Rabbi Nachman, he warned very seriously that a person should not borrow money above his means. That a person should always strive to live within his means. Once a person enters the realm of borrowing, it's almost impossible that he will get out of it if he's gone into that area above his level. Borrowing for short term, when you know money is coming, that's not a problem. But where a person borrows extremely over in order to make his wife happy, to make his kids happy and everything, and he doesn't train himself and the family to live with the reality of what they have, so he's in for it. Because the whole reason why Hashem is not sending the person uh, this extra bounty that he thinks he needs as desperate uh, necessities is because Hashem knows that the person can do without it. And if a person is faced with a tight situation, he's expected to strengthen himself in emunan bitachon. Obviously, we're talking that a person makes his efforts to bring in an income. He has a type of a job. He has a source of income. We're not talking about somebody who's just dropped everything. Once Rabbi Nachman said that uh, what the world calls calls hefker. Hefker is someone who doesn't care about anything. He's just all day davening and learning. He doesn't work. Rabbi Nachman says, to serve Hashem, you don't have to be like that either. But also the other extreme, where people, they put the main emphasis on hishtadlut, on working and doing that. And then the davening and learning is taken as a second class, I mean, even lower, that also, Rabbi Nachman said, is not needed. What's needed is a balance. The main thing of a Jew is Torah study and prayer, and by the way, working, but it's secondary to the real main effort of serving Hashem in Torah study and prayer. To what we said about the, the borrowing, Rabbi Nachman said, it's better to owe yourself than to owe the other guy. It's better to owe yourself another new coat and new shoes and fancy food than to have to owe this to somebody else. <clears throat> it's a good attribute to train yourself to live within your means and to be happy within that and not to feel lacking and bad. Just to realize that Hashem is guiding. Because normally when a person relies on Hashem, in the end Hashem always comes through. Nowhere do we find that Hashem just abandons a person to starve to death and to die like that. We're talking about exceptions when there's a degree on the world. We're not talking about that. In normal circumstances of a person who tries his best to live his life according to the will of Hashem, to Torah, to prayer, to emunah, and he makes a source of income, and still he's being tested with extreme tests of poverty and everything, he must hold on because the, 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 the wheel of fortune will eventually turn for him. He's just needed to do patience. He's making his effort. He's doing a minimal effort. He's not going crazier. So I have to work 24 hours a day to bring in that money if it's not coming out. Hashem is making it that it's so hard to bring in that buck. And the person has to wake up to realize, don't you realize that Hashem is doing it? The more you try to grab the item, it's just running away from you. Stop. Do what you have to do. Don't go crazy about it. And the main thing you should do is to turn to Hashem. If it's thanking Hashem for the good, if it's asking Hashem, telling Hashem, I can't handle this Hashem, it's a bit too difficult for me, whatever the case, but to live within your means and not to do what people over-exaggerate and they have to borrow 300,000, 10,000, 15,000 and they don't have the proper means to pay it back and they feel they need it, I can't do because at, why, at home they're, they're nagging me and this and that. It's an improper attitude Rabbi Nachman teaches and one should train oneself to live within the means. Rabbi Nachman himself said about himself when he, before he became a famous Rabbi, he said about himself that when he had hard times, how is it that he had hard times? He got married at a young age and they had what was called the nedunya, the dowry money, the money that they got at the marriage. And he lived off that money for a few years, him and his wife, until the money ran out. And with that, he was able to just invest his time in davening and Torah study and being invested in serving Hashem. And then when the money ran out, he had nowhere to really turn to for help. And he said about himself, in that time, it was very difficult. If I wouldn't have had trust in Hashem, so you would see me being like those other people who go all over the world collecting money to pay back their debts. If I didn't wait for Hashem's salvation, I would be like the rest of the world who goes around because they forced themselves and felt that they were compelled 
to get in a situation of borrowing way above their means, and how they spend the rest of their lives trying to collect to make it up, showing that that bounty wasn't meant, meant for them. And Rabbi Nachman said about himself, if I wouldn't have waited for Hashem's salvation, I would have become, quote-unquote, a schnorrer, like all those people go around collecting. We should be zonche b'zat Hashem, to live, with, live within our means, to have trust and faith that the wheel of fortune will turn. You do your part, you do your best. Not to worry, not to feel that Hashem is not looking at me, and not to feel down. If you see that you're alive, and you're awake, and you're living, and Bo Hashem, <clears throat> Hashem didn't abandon you, there's what to eat, minimum even, but there's something to eat, and there's drink, and there's electricity, minimum, then it's worth just waiting until this ball passes, Bezat Hashem.